Hey there, how are you? If you've been to this channel before, welcome back. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Ira and I make video essays about different topics while painting something. If that sounds good to you and you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. So today I will be talking about the troubled teen industry and more specifically about the claims that Daniel Bergoli, aka Bad Baby, recently made against Turnabout Ranch. And I will be pairing her claims or some of her claims with with footage from a reality TV series that was shot in Turnabout Ranch in 2005 called Brat Camp. As a teenager, I actually used to watch that show and when I saw Danielle Bregoli's video, it instantly brought the show to mind and I decided to make this video. So, without any further ado, let's paint an essay. Every parent has different philosophies in terms of educating their children and which tools and morals are necessary to teach their children to help them form themselves into what the parent would perceive as a good person. However, at times, especially around adolescence, parents can feel that they are losing control over who their child is becoming and the behaviors they choose to portray. Thankfully, an entire industry was formed to tackle this particular problem that has been dubbed the troubled teen industry. This industry is comprised of different camps and facilities which are promised to fix a child's troubled behavior using extreme disciplinary methods. In many programs, there isn't necessarily a bar to what can accurately be defined as troubled behavior. Children can and often are sent to these camps for things such as rebellious behavior typical for teenagers due to the hormonal changes, as well as actions that stem from them becoming more autonomous and experimental, often by going against their parents. Some programs even let children in if parents don't agree with their sexual orientation, which is absolutely horrifying. The disciplinary methods are often portrayed as methods derived from a nostalgic and idyllic way of life, from tribal and spiritual, such as in the case of Aspen Achievement Academy, which is a wilderness therapy program, to strict cowboy-style education, such in the case of Turnabout Ranch. Often, the different programs follow the same pattern of therapy, as the program is broken into phases. While the child is stripped from all basic privileges and gains them slowly as they move up the phases due to good behavior. The first phase is usually one of complete isolation. The children are not allowed to communicate with one another and must stay in a small confined circle or territory. In the first phase, they can only consume specific and often flavorless foods, for example, nuts, dried granola, and raw broccoli in Aspen Achievement Academy, which calls their first phase mouse, or unflavored pasta or oatmeal cooked with only water in Turnabout Ranch, which calls their first phase impact. The second phase often includes activities that lead to physical exhaustion. For example, tracking in the wilderness from sunrise to sunset while carrying a heavy load in Aspen Achievement to working tirelessly around the ranch in Turnabout. The basic scheme of these programs is essentially isolation, physically exhausting occupational therapy, and reading emotional letters from the child's family when they get to an emotional breaking point. As they move through the program, they are rewarded with better food, the privilege of communication, and ceremonial graduations to make them feel rewarded and validated. However, these programs hardly ever include actual therapy from a licensed and qualified therapist, and it seemed that aside from the first isolation phase, they are simply overstimulated physically, which distracts them from dealing with their emotions. There are also numerous allegations of physical and even sexual abuse towards these programs, as well as several cases of death. These aspects of troubled behavior modifying disciplinary institutes had been exposed recently by several public figures, the most notable being Paris Hilton, who in her 2020 documentary This is Paris, shed light on her truly horrible experience in Provo Canyon, which is a residential treatment center for troubled teens that she was forced to attend by her parents when she was 17 years old, as well as Danielle Bergoli, aka Bad Baby, who very recently spoke against Turnabout Ranch, where she was sent against her will at just 13 years old, while simultaneously placing blame on TV personality Dr. Phil for his role in sending her and several other children there, as well as for endorsing Turnabout Ranch to millions of fans during many episodes of his show. That's the thing with these places is you have no evidence. You don't have a phone there. They don't have cameras there. Like there's no evidence of none of this. So Dr. Phil, I am going to give you from now till April 5th to issue an apology, not only to me, 
but to Hannah and any other child that you sent to Turnabout or any other program like this. While, as Danielle herself said, there is no evidence to back up her claim since the children were separated from their phones and there are no cameras in the camp, which promotes itself as a cowboy pre-tech era camp. However, there still is some footage available to back up some of what she's saying happens in Turnabout and that is actually taken from a UK reality docuseries from 2005 called Brat Camp, which is fully available on YouTube. So for the first three days you're there, there's no showering. This place is all about taking away privileges. Like, okay, yeah, the phone is a privilege, TV, like all that. But they take away like necessity privileges, like sleeping on a bed, eating good food, not being cold. Roundy camp is not for the faint hearted. There are no creature comforts whatsoever. And bed is bare board with no mattress or pillow. It's three in the morning before the kids finally get to bed. But not before some final words from Wayne. Right, listen up. You guys have to earn privileges. All privileges have been lost up to this point from right here on. No pillows, one layer of sleeping bag. This is level one. We call it impact. After three days, if you follow all the rules, and we'll move you to level two, and things will get better. But it will get worse. Are we, are we allowed to show in the next three days? No. Okay. I told you those are privileges earned. Turnabout Ranch is a shock to the system. And for the brats sent to Utah to mend their ways, there isn't a pillow to cry on. Right now it's about 6.10. In about 10 minutes, I'm going to go in and wake the kids up and bring them outside. Uh, we'll give them a pot that has a spoon, water, and some oatmeal in it. The kids must stay alone in a stone circle with only unflavored food to eat. It's designed to break them in. I'm really cold. They put you in a circle, which is a big, it's a teepee. It's a little teepee, but it's open. And you have to sit there for three days. They wouldn't let me lay down for nothing. Like, I was falling asleep and they were like, uh-uh, get up, get up. Stay up and awake all day. No laying down or sleeping. One, is, in a one of the rules, young man, says no laying down and you're laying down. Shit that's minor is major to them. So if you do something like the tiniest, tiniest thing, you get a check. If Once you rock wild in the cabin five times, yelling at the top of your lungs. I will learn to put my gloves away. 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 I will learn if to put I can't gloves hear you, it doesn't count. I will learn to put my gloves away. I will learn to put my gloves away. I will learn to put my gloves away. Reflection is the punishment. When you do something so bad, or if you do anything that ticks them off, you have to go on reflection. You walk in the arena for hours on end. You sit outside in the cold, on the, on the floor. But you're gonna spend another night on the floor. But you're also gonna be hooked together. Get your butt on a rock and stay there. You don't laugh or anything, get the rock. Gemma Henley is in trouble for squabbling with the other girls. Now you start walking in that arena. Gemma's punishment is to spend three hours walking around the riding arena. It's a punishment that can last all day. The show was clearly created to show camps like Turnabout Ranch and other camps that are featured in other seasons in a positive light. Through the narration of the show, the viewer is meant to see the kids as out of control, which, in fairness, their behavior as portrayed in the show is not necessarily a false narrative. However, the viewer is not given an explanation of what makes the children act the way they do, and there is nothing said in the show that makes the viewer empathize with the children and what they're going through. Their breakdowns are narrated as acts of manipulation or signs of them being spoiled, as if breaking down in tears over being forced to sit in a stone circle in silence for three days and being pushed around with absurd rules is a sign of someone being pampered with a silver spoon. Moreover, since the aim of the show is displaying these camps as nothing short of a blessing for troubled teenagers, it presents everything that happens to the kids as things that they deserve, even when they gloss over footage that shows the children being roughly handled. While we are meant to applaud the idea of stripping the children down from basic comforts and privileges, it is shocking how many red flags can be seen in the footage I showed alone. Firstly, the children are told they won't be able to bathe while on impact, which lasts a minimum of three days, potentially more if the child doesn't abide by the thousand nitpicky ridiculous rules. Even if we overlook the fact that these particular children just flew in from England and then traveled however long from the nearest airport to the camp and are therefore already in need of a basic right to shower, not bathing for three whole days while spending the entirety of daylight out in the heat and dirt is highly unhygienic. 
Then we have the fact that they were only able to go to sleep at about 2 or 3 a.m. in the first night, woken up by 6.15 the following morning, and then made to sit in a circle not allowed to lie down or sleep. Even if they fell asleep the second the cameras left them and slept peacefully until they were woken up, which I doubt as they were distressed and spent the night on bare wood with no mattress or pillow, that would mean they only got about 3 or 4 hours of sleep, which is ridiculous, and it's not like they were given the opportunity to catch up on any sleep in the following days. So the kids are already sleep deprived, unable to clean themselves, and then they are made to sit in complete silence and isolation and eat nothing but unflavored oats cooked in water, which I doubt would be satiating to anyone, which the narrator himself states that it's designed to break them in. When impact ends, the unflavored oats are replaced with more proper meals, and the long hours of sitting down in silence are replaced by hard physical labor. No, no thought I'd be so happy to eat. <laughs> The boys tuck into their first decent meal in days, finally being let off impact. Hard work. Turnabout has a unique philosophy amongst American brat camps. Hard work is the best form of therapy. The unique philosophy that hard work is the best form of therapy. Pretty sure I've heard that philosophy before, and something tells me it definitely wasn't in a place that cared about therapy or the people's well-being. Not equating, I'm just saying. However, the introduction of a few basic privileges, such as better meals, the ability to sit in the shade during meals, the ability to bathe and wear shoes, is meant to be perceived as perks for good behavior, and it actually works. They get to sit in the shade inside, they get to go inside, you know, they get to have a shower or a bath, or whatever, and they get to wear shoes. So I'm absolutely jealous, <laughs> absolutely. For the first time, the kids feel the need to behave themselves. However, in my opinion, these are often motivators that encourage the children to just go along with the program to get it over with as soon as possible, as well as to avoid going back to the stone circle, which is one of the many punishments for anything the staff perceives as bad behavior. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the children's compliance with the program would lead to any long-term changes in their behavior, possibly because punishment doesn't change the reason why these children are acting out in the first place. In fact, two out of six kids on the show have been kicked out by their parents after graduating the program, and one was even brought back to turnabout, as in the case of Gemma, whose parents decided she was not fixed enough after she finished her program the first time, and then they kicked her out of the house entirely after she graduated the second time. As I said, Brat Camp shows Turnabout Ranch and other similar institutions in a very positive light and doesn't bring any discussion on mental health and therapy to the table. Aside from what appears to be one therapy session with the parents during a three-day visit that occurs when staff believes the child to be ready. The segments that show the family therapy sessions are admittedly quite heartwarming, though it appears as though they are focused mostly around how the parents are being made to feel as a consequence of their child's behavior, not necessarily why the children behave the way they do, and there is no mention of therapy beyond that singular session. When the mailbag arrives, it brings a letter from Ed's mother. She's only concerned with one thing. Since you've been friends with your friends, they have influenced you in what I see a negative and harmful way. They introduce you to a group of people who did not seem to have the same values or standards as us. Ed's mother has hit a raw nerve. She blames my friends. And um, I've had every single one of their support throughout the whole time I've been at home. <laughs> with one friend singled out for specific blame, Ed is not happy. He turns to turnabout veteran and father of 14, Cowboy Keith, for some straight-talking advice. Did you realize that you're going to stand before the Lord the Judgment Day and the books are going to be opened? It tells you in the Bible how the books are going to be opened and you're going to be judged? Every day, every word you say, everything you do is recorded. Okay, that's enough preaching. Oh, thank you, Keith. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Didn't help one bit. The show instead shows these programs as a much needed dose of tough love in a world where teenagers become ever more unruly and wild. Despite of their positive depiction of the troubled teen industry, for years horror stories have been coming out in regards to these programs and the fact that they are still endorsed by people with such large media platforms such as Dr. Phil is simply disturbing. Dr. Phil has been sending children to these programs or endorsing them on his show for years while allegation and charges against them had been going on since at least 2001. It definitely appears as though these programs seem to just cover a 
use of treatment over vulnerable children with euphemisms. Confinement spaces are called calm rooms. Food deprivation is called detox. Physical labor is called occupational therapy. Sleep deprivation is called method of subduing and so on. I'm not a mental health professional. My knowledge is purely recreational because it interests me, but my opinions are certainly uneducated and mostly come from my own experiences. The discussion on the troubled teen industry is polarizing because it essentially boils down to the topic of punitive measures versus rehabilitative measures. Many people believe that punishment is the best lesson. When putting your hand where it doesn't belong, for example, a pot of boiling water, the pain will teach you not to repeat that action and the lesson will be learned. If you punish a child for behaving in ways that you, as a parent, don't condone, then the child will learn not to repeat that behavior. And this might work in some cases, however, I believe that generally the behavior is not the problem but the symptom. It should be asked, why is this behavior happening? happening? What are the circumstances that led to this behavior? We often hear the phrase, hurt people hurt people. The decision to hurt yourself and others never comes from a place of happiness and inner peace, but rather a place of turmoil and chaos that the person who deals with these feelings must let out somehow. Sometimes this is let out on others, sometimes on themselves, sometimes both. When we see someone lashing out, the questions I believe should be asked are, is it even wrong for this behavior to happen considering the circumstances? Does does this child or person need to be punished for behaving in a way that the circumstances led them to? And even if you perceive the answer to be yes, then how do you determine what type of punishment is proportionate? How do you know when you go too far? Are you comfortable with putting those decisions in someone else's hands in regards to your own child? Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I hope that you found the topic interesting and I also hope that you enjoyed the painting process of this piece. This painting features my amazing friend Nastya, who once again was kind enough to model from one of my paintings. Let me know your thoughts on the topic in the comment section down below. Consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy this type of content. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.